interesting attributes about them that uh, make them really more unique than orcs in a lot of your other uh, fantasy setting. You know, they're kind of unique in being orcs in a sci-fi setting already, but they have a lot more that doesn't meet the eyes. I mean, the eye. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're uh, you played Warhammer 40k games, you definitely or read the books, you definitely come.
just have
oxide them their robust metal bodies that they can it's very hard to destroy them you can blow them in half and they'll uh, crawl and try and put themselves back together or just teleport back to their floating necropolises here so I think that would be a, an interesting topic for another video to explore more thoroughly slash creators and stuff which uh, their own personal lore kind of different there's some differences in there uh, kind of varies of how they interpret it but they refer to them as the brain boys um, which uh, is pretty commonly believed to reference those old ones uh, masters and creators that they originally fought for and alongside since they were a biologically um, developed race, it does explain a lot of, um, I guess I put that in there twice. I don't know how that always happens. <laughs> but, uh, oh, well, it's uploaded now. But, um, yeah, I go through so many pictures trying to uh, put this together. specific purpose and that is war so every single one of their traits is to make them hardy and robust and able to survive and um, just the best equipped for that task so a lot of their the skills that they need are just bred into their DNA like um, you know you have certain ones that are better for certain tasks and they just have those uh, innate skills and every orc just kind of knows how to stuff on the battlefield. It's one of their favorite things and they put together ramshackle stuff. They um, from vehicles to weapons to making you know the least kind of complicated of that is making weapons out of melee weapons out of stuff. But you know made this out of some <laughs> just a piece of metal made this curved blade. Put some some pointy bits on there. Some spiky bits. And you have a weapon there, but but lots of other things we'll get into later about uh, what uh, certain skills they have. So anyway, um, just to wrap up the um, old ones and Necron Wars, obviously, just to give a summary of that, the old ones did not win. That's why they're not still around and why they're the old ones, but the Necron... Uh, do still exist, they just uh, took a long nap after uh, their victory. But uh, how long ago was that? That was 60 million years, apparently, that the uh, orcs were created to fight in that war. And they outlived their creators and, um, you know, kind of got more primitive. They're just making the best of what technology is available that they can loot here. But, uh, yeah, they're still going. And out of everyone in Warhammer 40k, they seem to be having the most fun with it. <laughs> Since they're, they just love fighting. Alright, yeah. Just another cool picture here of them and their technology. I like that you can see big shells being, you know, I think that's probably just a bandolier, but, you know, you have the machine gun shells going in there, shooting. Nice look. I like this checkerboard uh, pattern for some reason. That's just their thing. Can they play chess? I kind of doubt it. Maybe that's, some, we'll get into the other races a bit later, but you have your Gretchen's down here. Setting in there shooting. But yeah, they had, you know, for those like 
chainsaw arms. Just a, a cool image, I thought. Let's keep it going. I think next I get into the, uh, just kind of like the hierarchy and the structure.
obviously what colors and they paint all their things in but their fighting style like which is it um is it the evil sons maybe there's some uh, like like vehicles and there's some that i did see a summary of it you guys can look it up for more information i forget the specifics of all of them but there's some that like to be stealthy i think the evil sons might be the ones that love vehicles uh, so it affects how they like fighting um and there was actually one in the book bane blade which i think is against the evil sons but there's an orc war boss leading that attack and he actually i don't know how would you say he's a bit so for an orc, a little bit more civilized, but I don't know, he kind of liked imperial society and like wore kind of like fancy imperial clothes and tried to speak more like a human and kind of wanted to like, I mean obviously he's attacking and taking stuff as an orc, but um, I don't know, trying to adopt more of human society and wanted to like trade for things, like he captures the tech priest and is like, alright, you help us and, and show us how this massive, like, tank works, and, uh, I'll give you all these gold and tech stuff in trade, so he's actually trying to, like, make a trade, but, um, so yeah, that, and you got some knobs, banners down here. some reason like in reverse order but are almost reverse not entirely but now we get into um got a, a discussion on mainly like the levels of worker society but in doing that also kind of touch on the different um kind of sub races because there's like an species and that's kind of divided into um, a handful of different sub races so there you have a war boss um, so as I said earlier they they can get truly massive and they're the biggest and the baddest the meanest because they kind of rule by by power and you know they have to be constantly just intimidating the orcs under them to maintain control over them. So, usually it's a, a massive, tough orc like this, but you might also get um, some kind of shamany weird boy or mech boy rising to the top as well. You know, just because they get the best loot uh, and they've been around for a long time, they generally end up with the best gear as well. That guy looks like he has a freaking cannon arm and a huge just a fully powered armor combat suit that he's in there as a claw arm. Um, look at the big horn thing he has on there as well. It's pretty crazy. But, uh, but yeah, sometimes he works very Uh, like I 
much. Um, and also just bigger things like the Gargans we saw earlier, the Gilligans. Um, so yeah, and they like repurposing what they can find. So in a lot of games, you'll see a lot of Imperial deck mixed in there, like looted Lehman Rust tanks that they maybe slap additional guns on or just throw some orky spikes and armor on top of. Maybe, I don't know, put some spikes on front of it so they can charge into people, who knows. But, um, yeah, they're actually capable of some intense stuff that can make, you know, easily somehow match the other races that they're fighting. At least the Imperium on levels of attack. Um, obviously not as refined, I guess, as the Eldar technology, but but the orcs have been known to have, you know, like I said earlier, the force fields, obviously the vehicles, um, the space ships, somehow they keep running. Um, yeah, just lots of interesting sub-teleporters. But, so yeah, they're capable of a lot, so they can't be underestimated here. Some Gretchen assistance. Another different angle and rendering of a massive gargant. And just like the Titans, these things are fortresses as well of just full on uh, forts and stuff and battlements on top with guns and cannons, machine guns. The knees are usually just like big forts as well with all kinds of armaments and just guns pointing out of everything, massive arm cannons, whatever these little four-barreled gun cannon is here, I say little, but that's massive, another gun, so just everywhere loaded up, and it's the same way with the Empire as well, there weren't many good pictures, surprisingly, of this, but next up are the Orc Bane Boys, so those are the surgeons, the doctors. You know, that craft is pretty crude, but if you're a race that is just constantly fighting, then uh, there's obviously a need for someone to put them back together. But yeah, the orcs are very robust. They have um, a very, very high tolerance for pain. That's why they just shrug off any wounds, you know, they'll do a charge and just get messed up by the Imperial Guard or something. They don't get an arm blown off and get shot by a laser gun a bunch of times and just keep on coming and not stop. But, uh, yeah, their bodies are also very robust, so, um, these orcish doctors don't have to be very sophisticated. Like, they can, um, chop off an arm of a dead orc and like so it on to a living orc and have that work. So, very robust, I don't know, anatomy. Oh no, that's probably not the way, right way to say it, but you know what I mean, right? They, they can heal back from just about any wound. And you know, you got the Gretchens in there assisting with a surgery as well. of, and they vary in what they can do in their role in, on the battlefield in orcish society, so they are able to channel the warp and, um, use some of the power seen by, like, Imperial psych or Psychers or the Eldar and stuff, um, I've seen some images of them just, like, out of their mouths, like, channeling warp energy and, like, shooting, like, a laser beam out of that, which is pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, some of them seem like they are some of, like, the least enthusiastic of the orcs on the battlefield, so a lot of them are, like, chained up and just kind of brought out onto the battlefield to unleash this devastating, uh, psychic abilities that they have kind of brought away or, I don't know, forced further into the thick of it, but a lot of them are chained up and controlled in that way. But there are 
some exceptions. There's a few like uh, going back to the Bane Blade one. Um, there was that orc war boss, but really things from the background were being controlled by this orc uh, called Green Eyes. And uh, he had an ability to, as uh, some of these weird boys do, to kind of pull on um, what the orcs have as like a combined kind of gestalt. Um, just low level, um, combined communal psychic power. So I threw a lot of synonyms in there just to kind of explain what gestalt means if you haven't heard that word before. But, um, but yeah, I guess in Gestalt you could kind of, it's kind of applied to things, I don't know, maybe like the Borg from Star Trek or like the Tyranid even from this universe, but just kind of like that combined kind of, usually it's for like an intellect and like, um, shared, I don't know, yeah, like intellect or brain power, but in this case it's just like a buildup of Loki psychic energy that can affect um, the actual world to some extent. Um, like, and there's a lot of, so the way they usually affect it um, is, I don't know, just things that they communally kind of think are true and will happen, kind of seem to happen. Examples of that, a lot of it's oddly color related. So they think that by painting things red, it'll make them go faster. Or uh, painting things yellow. So that's why, you know, like a lot of their weaponry, like the kill the can or their war trucks and things, are red. Or a lot of their guns, like their axes. I don't know why axes actually for that, but. But yeah, a lot of their guns are yellow because that they think that means it'll explode bigger or do more damage. Uh, purple, they think, means it'll make them more stealthy. Which, I guess, purple's a dark purple's not a bad color to pick if you want to be stealthy at night. So that one may just work out. But um, yeah, so I, there's actually some some purpose behind their picking of colors and you know there's there is some debate on how how much it practically affects the real world but it is in the lore that uh, it does have some effect just because they all believe it and have some just very low level amount of psychic ability that you know they don't even know exists <laughs> or really care about but is there so back bring that back to the weird boy there are some that are able to kind of pull on that power harness it and also kind of use it as a beacon to expand their wall like they can just kind of subconsciously call the orcs to come um and there was also um i forget what book it was in now if there's another picture while I talk about this, but um, they were actually using a bunch of, oh, there's just another weird <laughs> picture, like that's from the game San Sanctum Reach, I've never played that one actually, but of a, yeah, there he is, he kind of chained up again, and this guy's brain is <laughs> visible through his skull, <laughs> but anyway, there was, um, yeah, I forget what book, but sitting at like an ambush point where they wanted to ambush the Imperial fleet and uh, they were using their I guess it was a group of weird boys and then pulling on the power of the other orcs but using their psychic ability to disrupt the warp and force the Imperial Navy ships that were traveling past that point out of the warp so they had to translate to real space unexpectedly and then just immediately met with an orc ambush. And then that's the main groups of uh, odd boys. So now we're just down uh, beneath uh, in society. You have the war boss who's leading things, the knobs under that, the elite, the odd boys filling different roles in society that make them unique and then we're just down to the 
obviously with a Z, since that's how that works and like spelling things. But um, yeah, that's just going to be your average orc at the bulk of the forces. This picture also has given me some strong Mad Max vibes. That's just how the orcs are, though. That's just how they operate. Um, so yeah, I guess this could be said about many of the orcs, but uh, especially if just your average one, they're not really too bright. They don't have an interest really in doing much besides fighting or racing or doing other things to, to challenge um, each other, improve their own strength. Marines just truly massive. A lot of that's the armor. 
actually the first uh, Warhammer 40k book that I read. Um, and yeah, I like it. It's a pretty simple story, but I, I don't know, I find that kind of stories really interesting. So, uh, he's, I'm assuming that's the main character. the 
that they're able <laughs> to use and wield on the battlefield, but they still have their own uh, niche to fill, their useful role in orca society. Now, they're not too smart, they're not too strong, but they have a natural affinity with squigs and in cultivating useful fungi for the orcs. So, the squigs are little two-legged uh, piece of burden things that the orcs use, but um, you know, the mushrooms the orcs use for different potions and salves and as a food source and poisons. There they are uh, with a mushroom there. <laughs> Looking much fierce and less naughty than in the other picture. But, um, I don't know, I don't think I threw a, a picture of a squig here intentionally. So, I don't know if we saw them somewhere else. I don't think so yet. But maybe we will. But they're a little red, scaly, um, too like it. Little round balls of alien <laughs> orcness. They have this kind of weird that they're red instead of green. Although orca do bleed red, despite being green. But yeah, the orcs are used as attack piece. And there's different types of squigs, too, that fill these roles, but you have the ones they use sometimes as mounts for the, the Gretchen and stuff, and they do that in the fantasy setting as well. As transport, as food is a primary one, or sometimes they just strap bombs on them and send them in. So that's kind of all the different, and I didn't mention it here, but there are a couple other animals races mixed in there, like Squiggith, I think is like the big, I think that's the right name, of the big, um, kind of look like a Kodo, maybe from World of Warcraft, just giant four-legged dinosaur type things that sometimes the orcs all like use as a vehicle, essentially strap like a fort onto its back with cannons, make it into a living tank, essentially. but it's uh, a lot less uh, than you might think despite looking you might assume that uh, this is clearly an orc male but wonder that you haven't seen any orc females and that's because the orcs are actually genderless they don't have any nothing going on down here I assume um, and they're actually fungus actually just grown. So that probably ties back into their being engineered as a race and this being a very effective way for them not to have to reproduce. They are just, you know, grown from fungal spores and um, they drop a lot more spores if they meet a violent end. So that kind of even drives them more and fits in well with their their desire for war, their natural I don't know, battle lust, blood lust. But yeah, I think that's definitely the old ones and then them actually being fungus are very interesting backstories and, and lore that kinda set them apart from your uh, average orcs in other settings. I really love Warhammer 40k lore and just like how much lore there is and how much how unique it is and how well thought out it is. I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so when they die, they and just from being around as well, they kind of seed an area with fungal spores that um, will kind of grow to starting from kind of the bottom of their ecosystem up will, um, you know, create a whole new orc tribe or just replenish forces for uh, their existing orcs that are there. But, you know, just starting from fresh spores, it'll start with like the squigs and then the 
snotlings and gretchens and orcs and then bigger orcs, you know, it'll just work its way up that way and then you'll have a whole new problem on your hands. And I said that's, you know, that also kind of, if they are fungus, they're plants, kind of explains how they can just slap limbs back on or, and that'll, you know, regrow together and work or they can take a lot of damage and shrug it off and just heal from it afterwards. So it kind of explains a lot of that in just how there's so many and they can reproduce so quickly. So there's one meeting a violent end. He's probably going to crap out a bunch of spores <laughs> is the scientific way of explaining that and um, the vibe I was going for with this picture of them just these embattled uh, defenders here was kind of like um, so this, why also the case it's very difficult to get rid of orcs once they've set foot on a planet and this fungal spore releasing and repopulating is the reason for that. So that's why you may have heard like on Imperial Worlds, like there's an orc invasion, they beat them back, they think they, you know, destroyed them, they're all gone, or very limited numbers. And then maybe, I don't know, a year, a few years later, suddenly out of the, just the barrens or the, the jungles or something, just a mass of orc forest will just come out and start a new assault on the planet just completely out of the blue so and that pattern unless great pains are taken will um, will continue like that so you just have worlds that keep facing these invasions um, and here this is like an extreme example but it has been done in some cases where they just can't get rid of the orcs on a planet, you know, they might do, depending on the size of the human population, an exterminatus, as is happening here, or just an orbital bombardment, or, you know, bring out some flamers and just burn down an entire area to ensure that those spores are gone. Because, you know, you can't have full-grown orc boys just being grown consistently, just spreading like a fungus. A, an orc rock, R-O-K, but essentially it is just kind of like a meteor with some engines on it and some room for a lot of orcs in there. So they'll commonly make places like that their home or um, space hulks and things. And these rocks, the orcs don't have the most advanced way of getting to the surface, but they'll just kind of drop these from orbit on a planet. Sometimes a lot of orcs will survive. Sometimes they all die. Um, I forget the name of the book um, off the top of my head right now, but I read one kind of recently where an orc rock had crash landed onto a planet in a pretty remote spot. And, uh, you know, all the orcs were reported dead, but uh, then they sent out some some crews later to kind of get rid of it or clean it up and uh, they lost contact with those people because despite being uh, all the original orcs dying you know those those spores still released and started growing on the planet and they had a, an orc infestation around the crash site that they had to dispatch a, um, you know the army to go take care of to navigate the difficult terrain out there and, and get out there and fight it. But um, this is, that story is a good example of something coming up right here. So in that case, um, or in other ones where, you know, all the original orcs are dead so just, and they don't have advanced technology from that, there's no one to really guide them. Develop into feral orc tribes, which, you know, they'll use.
salvage some scrap metal from the wreckage and stuff. All the actual vehicles and weapons. Like it was a bad crash, so they were not usable at all. So, but they did salvage some of the metal and make uh, different orc tribes and stuff, and built up pretty big. So it was a hard fight to eradicate them. But yeah, they kind of referred back to kind of warmer fantasy orcs. Um, in the absence of higher technology. But, you know, obviously, they can adapt to me. And then when I was have a gun, <laughs> actually, back there. But once they do encounter some higher technology, they're quick to adapt and figure out how things work, since it is baked into their DNA. They'll just use the best of what they have available. And also, this doesn't really have anything to do with what I'm talking about right now, but I just thought of so they're constantly like growing uh, teeth like this and tusks, uh, kind of like a shark and going through them. And um, they actually, as their internal currency, use their te teeth, I think they say teeth with an F, but uh, as currency, which is interesting. And they don't last forever, apparently they break down after a while, so that uh, prevents them from hoarding them too much. this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. They take a long time to make, and maybe some of you, I put it in a, a community post, but <laughs> I made this little uh, fun little cinematic out of uh, the end of the Dawn of War intro. So, um, let's pause it there for a little outro here. actually the longest lore video for the ASMR version, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a lot of work, but a lot of fun to make these. Um, if you enjoy these videos, um, please check out the other version of this on my Warmer 40 Con channel. Um, if you like the lore and you like the style of those videos as well, subscribe to that. That would help me out. Um, I'm going to keep both versions going where I do the research and uh, make a more concise, well-worded uh, video on that channel. And then we just kind of watch it and I expand on it and add in more information from the sources I'm pulling from and additional interesting facts in this video to discuss with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I already have some ideas for some next videos uh, to work on, some of which I mentioned uh, here while we were talking about it, uh, the orcs. But, but yeah, if uh, you guys can make, feel free to make requests in the comments, and uh, you know, I'll definitely take those into consideration. I might make some more where I try to, I don't know, focus on do less overviews and focus more 